For me, it was Final Fantasy X. As I played through this legendary game, I was suffering from a massive bout of depression, crippling anxiety attacks, and an overall fear of graduating college and entering the real world. I associate this period with Final Fantasy X, but in a good way. The fantastical adventures, the wisdom of Orin, and the struggle against all odds gave me hope. As I graduated college, it was this quote by Orin that I carried with me. This is your world now. The game inspired me, and I'm not the only one who found inspiration in a video game. I think that one of the great misnomers out there is that video games, and that gaming in general, contribute nothing to people who are looking to beat depression, anxiety, or other mental issues. I know far too many non-gamers that have this idea in their head that gamers look like this. Those of us who play video games know that this stereotype is just that, a stereotype, a caricature that isn't really based in reality. In fact, games can be a major net positive if you view them as a tool and a potential chance for personal improvement and growth. First, maybe the most obvious, video games allow you to relieve stress and improve your mood. There is something deeply cathartic about having a long day, coming home, and entering a fantasy world. You can forget who you are as soon as you hit that button, allowing the video game to help you become someone else. This isn't just me talking, by the way. This is a research-backed idea. In 2023, a variety of video game associations published the, quote, Power of Play report, which was a study of 13,000 gamers across the world. Now, this is a self-interested group, so take their results with a shaker of salt, but others have come to similar conclusions. The report found that 71% of gamers across the world use games for stress relief, and another 64% found that games help them deal with everyday challenges. As noted by Young Minds United Kingdom, a mental health group for kids, this isn't a surprise. Gaming helps people who are looking for help when it comes to taking time out from our busy lives to switch off and relax by gaming. Multiple studies have found that moderate gaming, emphasis on moderate, can help induce relaxation and stress relief in kids and adults. Even better, video games can improve mood. For example, a 2021 study found that depressed mood was lower in 11-year-olds who gamed than those who didn't. A 2022 analysis of 16 other studies found the same. People who casually gamed also experienced a reduction in depression symptoms. Now, I wanna make sure we don't confuse stress relief with complete escapism, because as we all know, that's out there too. Video games can be a great release, yes, but the challenge becomes spending too much time in a video game world if the real world seems too overwhelming. Unfortunately, that's a reality. Excessive gaming is tied to a variety of psychological and physical illnesses. How real is this issue? There is now a formal definition for video game addiction in the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual, a guide which is used to diagnose people who are suffering from mental illness. In other words, if you game too much, you may actually have a diagnosed addiction. Games can be good, there just has to be a balance. Next, let's take a second to talk about the ways that modern gaming has helped to create a sense of community. Thanks to the internet, video games are no longer just social experiences when you play a two-player game like they were when I was a kid. Instead, a large swath of games have mobile options, clans, and off-game connections like Discord servers. These multiplayer experiences allow you to connect with others and even take a friendship beyond a video game. In that regard, they can help you forge a community and make friends when others aren't available, or even when others are. Also worth noting, forging a community often means actually developing critical social skills, particularly for younger kids. Gamers cooperate, plan, engage in tactics, and learn the give and take of relationships. Again, I'm not saying that gaming is a panacea. What I am saying is that gaming can be a really good supplement to traditional relationships, and one that can help people in the real world. In some cases, gaming can actually help develop social skills. A 2006 study examined the messages that gamers sent to each other, and found that there were more social-emotional messages than task-oriented ones. This means that gamers who were sending messages were actually developing social skills, even if you haven't met any of your gaming friends in real life, think about how many friends you game with. You use your games as a method to build rapport and common interests. This is about as far from social isolation as you can get. Next, you know that whole stereotype about video games deadening the brain? Nope. Video games, when done right, can actually be good for your head. Video games can help with the development of quite a few cognitive and physical skills. For example, a 2022 study of more than 2,200 kids found that those who played more than 21 hours of video games every week had better control over impulsive behavior and more memorization skills than non-gamers. Other studies have found that video games exercise your attention control and reward processing in a good way, meaning that video games actually grow the gray matter in your head. Furthermore, success in video games often requires task management, 
attention to details, and prioritization, abilities that are key in executive functioning. In other words, video games can train your brain. I also want to talk about identity and how players can find identity in video games. Who we are and who we want to be is often the fundamental journey that people engage in throughout their lives. It can be difficult, lonely, and painful, particularly if you find yourself becoming someone who others in society will have issues with. In that regard, video games can help people become whoever they were meant to be and whoever they want to be. One of the more impactful video game experiences I ever had was playing Tell Me Why, a graphic adventure game by Don't Not, developers of the Life is Strange series. You play much of the game as Tyler Ronan, a transgender character, and alternate between him and his twin, Allison, as they deal with unraveling the mystery that led to their mother's murder. This was one of the first video games to star a transgender character, and the game was put together by people who expertly crafted the character based on real, authentic actors. Developers consulted with a variety of experts, including the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, or GLAD, for input into Tyler. Tyler was also voiced by August Aiden Black, himself a transgender man. This type of game puts you into the shoes of the character. You learn their backstory, hear their thoughts, and live their life. In so doing, you can experience the world from another perspective, learning more empathy in the process. Now, let's be clear, games have a long, long, long and sordid history of using sexist and racist tropes that goes back into the founding of video games. However, when done right, games can be a powerful tool for exploring identity and learning to live another person's life. Games like Mafia 3, Telltale's The Walking Dead, The Last of Us Part 2, and Night in the Woods all feature minority characters that offer you new perspectives on what it's like to live a life that may be different than your own. If you are a white dude like me, gaming can open your eyes to new viewpoints. If you're a member of any of these communities, you may be able to find solace and hope in these characters and find your own resilience. Last, I want to talk about using video games to express yourselves. And again, I want to talk in the larger context here. When I was younger, you didn't design your character, you became your character. You were whoever the video game developers told you to be. Be that a small mustachioed plumber, a blue hedgehog, a muscled karate expert, whatever. As games evolved, they gradually added more elements of self-expression, allowing you to add your name or select from a series of pre-rendered avatars. Then more features were added, like body type or hair color. Now you have people designing Taylor Swift or Nicolas Cage in Baldur's Gate 3. Art and self-expression have always gone hand in hand, and there is no question that video games can be art. In allowing you to design someone else, video games enable you to express yourself. Of course, this is about more than just character creation. These days, larger video games, again, take Baldur's Gate 3 or even something older like Skyrim, often allow you to make choices that can reflect who you are, who you want to be, or who you would never be. Countless video games act as life simulators. They let you create a version of yourself that you would never dream of and test identities that you may want to play with. This is even more the case for MMOs like The Elder Scrolls Online or World of Warcraft. I'd note that the idea of expressing yourself through physical appearance is one thing, but MMOs take the system deeper. They allow you to express yourself via the roles you play. If you're aggressive, will you be a tank? If you're a helper in the real world, will you be a healer in an MMO? That might be a little reductive but it does prove a bigger point. Games can let you find your personality traits. This can positively reflect in the real world. So what's my point here? Why am I doing this video? I am someone who has suffered from depression and mental illness for decades. I have always found comfort in a good game and getting into the flow of a roguelite or entering a new fantasy world. I think that people need to understand that contrary to popular belief, Video games can be powerful tools for your mental health. At the same time, like any tool, video games can be more harmful than positive. Yes, they can provide for stress relief, but they can also create an atmosphere that allows for too much escapism and create a fantasy world that detracts from the real one. Yes, video games can forge real friendships and a sense of community, but they can easily devolve into toxic masculinity, racial epitaphs, and the radicalization of the lonely. My point is that people need to be realistic about the benefits of video games. But so do gamers. Games can be a wonderful tool, and when used in conjunction with other research-backed tools, like therapy, medication, and lifestyle changes, video games can, to paraphrase my old friend Oren, help you find your world.